Today, January 29th, 1977, marks the dawn of a new significant era in the history of Trinidad and Tobago. On the grounds of the President's House, Port of Spain, guests are gathered for the inauguration of our first elected president, Ellis Emmanuel Innocent Clark. Among them are the Prime Minister, Dr. Eric Williams, members of government, the judiciary, the diplomatic corps, and religious organizations. The Honorable Chief Justice Isaac Hayatali administers the oath of office. Your Excellency. As the duly elected president of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, are you ready and willing to enter upon the duties of your office on this 29th day of January in the year of the Lord 1977? And for that purpose, to take and subscribe the oath of office prescribed by the Constitution. I am. Will you then take the Bible in your right hand and say after me, I, Ellis Emmanuel Innocent Clark, I, Ellis Emmanuel Innocent Clark, do swear by Almighty God, do swear by Almighty God, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to Trinidad and Tobago, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to Trinidad and Tobago, and to the best of my ability, and to the best of my ability, preserve and defend the Constitution and the law, preserve and defend the Constitution and the law, that I will conscientiously and impartially, that I will conscientiously and impartially, discharge the functions of President, discharge the functions of President, and will devote myself to the service and well-being of the people of Trinidad and Tobago, and devote myself to the service and well-being of the people of Trinidad and Tobago. So help me God. Having taken the oath of office, President Ellis Clark addresses the nation. Almost exactly four years ago, on the 31st of January 1973, to be precise, I was sworn in as Governor General of Trinidad and Tobago. I took an oath that I would be faithful and true allegiance bear to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law. That oath was prescribed by our 1962 independence constitution. In 1962, we had traveled the familiar road that leads from the dictatorship of Crown Colony government via internal self-government to the desirable goal of independence. Very shortly after independence, it was my privilege to help to secure for us our appropriate place amid the family of independent countries at the United Nations. Later, it was my good fortune to be called upon to steer us into several organizations and groupings, particularly the Organization of American States and the Inter-American Development Bank. Today, 
the will of the people freely expressed has resulted, albeit immediately, in my assuming office as the first elected president of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. How vastly different is the oath that I have just taken from that earlier one four years ago. The earlier oath was simply an oath of allegiance to a sovereign. Our country found no mention in it. Today, it is to Trinidad and Tobago that I have pledged to be faithful and bear true allegiance. Today, it is to the people of Trinidad and Tobago, their service and their well-being, that I have sworn to devote myself. Section 37 of our Republican Constitution requires me to take this oath before entering upon the duties of my office. None of you, my fellow citizens, is required by the Constitution to participate with me in that oath. But I, I beg you to pledge yourselves, here and now, silently, as I did vocally, to bear true faith and allegiance to Trinidad and Tobago. I entreat you to devote yourselves to the service and well-being of every one of our fellow citizens. I implore you to banish any sentiments, any attitudes, any preconceived notions, any, any concepts or ideas that might tend to divide or embitter us or alienate us one from another. I beseech you to look upon and regard every one of our fellow citizens without exception as a sister or a brother and to act accordingly. Then, and then only, will my oath be the leaven with which our entire society is leavened. Then, and then only, will we justly reflect upon today as the dawn of a new significant era as a proud milestone in our history, as a blessing for our people. I pray, Almighty God, and I ask you to join in my prayer, will permit that this should come to pass. Thank you.